Welcome back. You're still watching our live coverage of the U.S. election 2016 live in our studios here in Lagos. And we still have Mr. Muiwa Shobo here. Just before we went on break, you were talking to us about what would happen if Donald Trump becomes president of the United States. He seems to have an admiration for the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, who also seems to return that admiration. So what will their friendship do for the for globe for the balance of global power well <clears throat> for, for trump trying to be friends with um with putin's like becoming friends with a cobra or something like a snake you see putin has figured out trump trump is very impulsive okay he says things he reacts irrationally and and so putin is looking at that and said well <laughs> i can go this guy into doing things Okay, because of that, I mean, it's a dangerous situation in the sense that you cannot have somebody as impulsive as Donald Trump there holding perhaps the biggest arsenal of nuclear weapon, I mean, in the world with um, Putin holding another, I mean, huge arsenal of nuclear weapon right there. I mean, and because Putin is, you know, Putin is very smart. He's like a fox. He looks there and then he figures out that uh, uh, Trump will be easy for him to handle and manipulate. And that is very, very important. Now, compared that to Hillary Clinton, who has stood toe to toe, face to face, with Putin as Secretary of State, Putin knew who Hillary was, how tough Hillary could be, how tough she could be in negotiation. But Trump saying that Japan should have nuclear weapons, I mean, that's, 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 that's welcome, man. That's welcoming to, to Putin. Putin will just run a rough shot over him. And well, that, is, that is why it is dangerous. But how could we uh, uh, think that way? I mean, Mr. Trump is an accomplished businessman. He is a billionaire several times over. You don't get to becoming, I mean, to, to becoming that wealthy and that influential by being gullible and, uh, you know, being uh, easy to manipulate like that. I, in fact, I would have said that it will be probably to, there's a possibility of Trump being able to manipulate uh, Mr. Putin than the other way around. Now, Putin is a seasoned politician. He's been there. Uh, Trump is not a businessman. I mean, you don't run a country like a business. It's, it's just never done. I mean, you don't. You're not making profit, but that is that is his own view. That is what where he's coming from. That's why he's dangerous. You see, he stood there and looked at America and say, "You have a problem. I am the only one who can fix it." If you go with that kind of approach with someone like Putin, do you know who Putin is? This guy is now he he controls everything. He, he's so powerful, okay, and he, he, he's a dangerous. Uh, demagogue, in my in my opinion, and then you're going to have somebody like uh, like Trump uh, standing toe to toe with him. That is why. And then uh, we, we suspect, and the whole world suspect that maybe Trump has some business interest in Russia. I don't know, but he has denied it, and he said he went there for some whatever it is. And so, so I do not trust Trump to be able to handle someone like Putin. Yes, he can have Secretary of State and uh, Cabinet members. Who can do that for him? But because of his track record, the rhetorics that come from him, I, I just cannot. I'm not comfortable with that. I mean, I'm not really. I, he, he said he was going to join with Putin in Syria and then blow out the uh, what is it, the terrorists or exactly. something like that. Exactly. Let me come yeah. in there now. Let's look at the war yeah. in Syria mm -hmm. and the fight against the Islamic State. Yeah. Donald Trump says the Obama administration has been weak mm -hmm. in in its handling of the war in Syria and the fight against ISIS. And most people expect that Hillary Clinton will continue the legacies of President Obama. Now, don't you think Donald Trump has a point by saying that the U.S. has been a bit weak in handling this crisis? The Syrian war is going, it, it's in its fifth year. Yeah, I don't think he has any point, and I'll tell you why. Because Hillary Clinton actually came out and said, well, we are going to be tactical in using airstrikes and putting um, some sort of um, no-fly zone. Which, look, Syria is such a, look at what's going on in there now. Russia is bombing Aleppo like no man's business. Now think about the rebels, but then think about innocent lives that are being wasted every day 
I mean, and, and here is coming, Trump is coming, oh, we're going to work with Russia. Russia is not going to work with because Russia has an interest in, in Syria. They're not going to sit down with you and work. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. position, I believe, is that Syria is still a foreign, is a sovereign nation, okay? Mm -hmm. We shall find a political way of resolving this issue without hurting more innocent people. Look at the refugee situation coming out of Syria alone that's overwhelming its neighbors. So, but from that view alone, I think the U.S.'s uh, approach in Syria is right. I think if Hillary gets there and do the no-fly zone, it will help a lot. But to just go there and keep on bombing uh, indiscriminately, I, I don't but think that's the way to go. How easy is it going to be for Hillary Clinton to get the no-fly zone without the backing of Russia? See, one, there are negotiations, negotiations going on right now, and I think Russia actually stepped back after a while. Because once Russia is interested, it's not to kill people. And, 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 and the, the fact of the matter is, if you, allow, if, 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 you, if you allow Trump to go, you know what Trump said? Let's just bomb the hell out of ISIS. Let's just, <laughs> let's just bomb them into smithereens. I mean, is that, a, is that a foreign policy approach that we want? Well, uh, we've been talking about uh, Mr. Trump and the uh, news just breaking, as the results have come in from three out of the 50 states of the United States of America, and it's 2-1 in favor of Trump. Mr. Trump has won in Indiana and Kentucky, 11 uh, electoral votes in Indiana and uh, eight in Kentucky, while Clinton has won in Vermont, three electoral votes. So it's uh, Trump winning in Indiana and Kentucky, two states there with a total of 19 electoral votes, while Clinton has won in Vermont with a total of three electoral votes. So 2 one 19 3, depending on how you look at it. But that's this news that's uh, coming in now, results from three out of 50 states. And Donald Trump is in the lead so far. I mean, it's nothing uh, significant, but then, nothing well, does that right. portend? Uh... No, it doesn't. <laughs> because Indiana and, um, and Kentucky are actually red states. I mean, there was no way Hillary would have won in those states. I mean, they are deeply red. So, don't let people panic. <laughs> 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 then I remember the panic and I was, you know, because I tell you, from being here, I, I spoke to a lot of people in this country, and they, they worry. And you want to think, why are you so worried about exactly. the election? Because, because we all have interest there. Some people have children over there. Some people have, you know, husbands or wives residing in the United States. And so it, it's just worrisome. You know, to see someone like Trump, I know some people are actually supporting him in this country. Mm -hmm. I know in the United States, among Nigerians, especially the, the so-called Nigerian evangelicals, I mean, who don't believe in abortion and all those things, who are driving their, their support for, for Trump. But people are nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I am nervous. <laughs> well, uh, you are a legal practitioner. Yeah. And uh, there was this question raised earlier about uh, Mr. Trump suing uh, polling unit in, in Nevada, Nevada over the issue of uh, early voting. Where do you think that would end up? Well, I w what actually happened was the, in Nevada, I think in, in some polling um, places, they, 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 they left the polling stations open late for people to vote. And the reason for that was because the law allows it and says, if you have people on the line, of course, it would be stupid to not let them vote. So he challenged it, and the court ruled from chambers. They just overruled him. <laughs> and he said, well, it's over. Uh, again, that shows you the type of person this guy is. Now, finish your train. Trump is coming to the presidency of the, if he did, the United States with over 3,000 lawsuits. That he's fired all over the place against people, against workers, against casinos, against all sorts of people. So uh, he's showing his true character immediately, even before becoming the president. Just to, why? Because those people who are voting there are Latinos. He will have done that if they're white folks. He, he won't. They're just Latinos. Some of them are voting for the first time. And so he's showing his racist aspect as well in just filing that lawsuit. But thank goodness the judge. Uh, uh, did not agree with him. Well, he did say also that uh, 
if the results did not go in his favor, he would not accept them. Now, what are his chances if he decides to go the legal way, if he decides to go to court? Well, you see, again, you have to look at the U.S. election. It's not, you don't have a national election. You have state-by-state state mm -hmm. election. So he will have to look at the state and say, well, something is wrong, and challenge that particular um, um, state or the election results in that particular. He cannot challenge the whole country, the whole 50 states, or everywhere that Hillary Clinton uh, will have won. So he'll have to do that. And you see, having voted in the United States for a long time, I can tell you how difficult. I mean, is this a rig the election is actually state-based. I mean, you have the, they have their databases. They have. I'm not saying something fishy cannot happen. Some try right to vote twice or something, but it's such. A, I mean, it, it, to me, it cannot sway the elections or the result one way or the other. I Maybe mean, you, you can have, you know, isolated cases where people try to do something funny. But you have Donald Trump's people coming out with guns and standing in front of polling places to intimidate folks. Now, what do you call that? <clears throat> now, let, let, let me come in here. So mm -hmm. many people have compared the campaigns mm -hmm. for this year's U.S. election as a little close to what we have in Nigeria, oh. in Africa. You know, it's been bitter. There's been allegations of rigging, even threats of violence. You remember that some reports suggested that Donald Trump once or twice suggested that Hillary Clinton should be assassinated. Now, is this what one would have expected from one of the most advanced democracies in the world? Well, look, even though it will not have been expected, I don't think it's, such a situation is totally foreclosed, depending on who is running and the kind of people who run. But I don't think you can compare that to the situation we have in Nigeria. I mean, they're just so starkly different from uh, from each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, threat of violence, mm -hmm. but you don't mm -hmm. hear people being given bags of rice and, um, and, <laughs> and, and oil and all the time, giving people, I witnessed the election here, I, I was part of that, sorry. Mm -hmm. And those people were giving things and they will not vote for you unless you give them something. Mm -hmm. And then you have to look at the situation over there. It's, it's, they have electoral finance laws that actually dictate how you finance the election. You don't finance it with your own money, except in certain exceptions like the uh, Donald Trump thing. Mm -hmm. it's, so uh, uh, here, and if you can, who, who, who has money can just come up and say, I'm running for an election, I spent his money. And so when he gets there, what do you expect him to do? So to get his money back. And that's the, that's the, difference. That's, that's the difference there. You know, the democracy over there, of course, we go back and forth, but it's solid. And the fact that this is actually happening is testament to, to, to that, that that foundation is unshakable. Well, we've, you've raised this uh, very interesting uh, point here, and I would like to know, I mean, there have actually been restrictions placed on uh, funding of elections yeah. in the United States of America. Yeah. But for someone like Donald Trump, who has all the money in the world, what sort of comparative advantage does that give him? You, you see, the, the, the U.S. campaign finance laws are so complex. I mean, it's not, it's not what we want to even start discussing here because there have been challenges upon challenges. Some restrictions were lifted because of, um, of um, um, uh, the right to, to free speech and so on and so forth. But generally, generally, people supposed to raise money to fund election. I mean, there'll be exceptions where you're a super park or a park or you're running for presidency or you're running at the state level and so on and so forth. But that is what the Electoral Commission concerns itself about, is the finance, uh, the, the, the financing of, 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 of election. It works because when people contribute to your com campaign, they're expecting certain things. It's not because they believe in you, that's why they're contributing to, 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 to your campaign. Uh, they, 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 they want to be part of your, of your success, which is not the situation here. I mean, nobody contributes to anybody's campaign except, you know, you're a big guy, you have money, and you want to be a godfather, and so on and so forth. And that, is, um, that's, that affects our democracy. Well, uh, for now, uh, we'll be taking a short break, and when we return, hopefully we will be hearing from the Consul General of the United States here in Nigeria, Mr. John Bray. And of course, I also understand that uh, we have uh, 
something else from our correspondent Ayotunde Balogun in Washington, D.C. These and more coming up in just a moment. It's the live coverage of the U.S. presidential election live on Channels Television. Do stay with us.